Hello and welcome to Activating Greatness. I'm Nathan Crane, an award-winning author, documentary filmmaker, and health and wellness expert. And I'm Derek Crane, a certified personal trainer, health and fitness coach, and trainer of professional athletes. Each week, we broadcast new episodes with experts on life, health, fitness, business, and leadership to help you manifest the greatness that's already within you. Activating Greatness is about helping you live your life to your fullest potential and live with more meaning, purpose, health, and fulfillment. In this episode, we're talking with Mark Romero. Mark is an internationally known sound healing expert and transformational leader. Through his music, Mark eliminates negative influences in the environment and creates a field where we can operate at optimal levels. Mark's successful 19-year career as an executive manager and CEO took a dramatic turn the day a former NASA consultant discovered that his music contained frequencies that canceled negative energy. His music CDs and speaking performances have placed him on stages with internationally respected leaders like Mark Victor Hansen, T. Harv Eker, and Bruce Lipton, among more. And Mark is recognized as a leader in the field of personal energy. Before we dive in, we want to thank our sponsors real quick for helping make this podcast possible for all of us. Performance tea is something both Derek and I drink and love. One thing we really like about it is that it's handcrafted in small batches and made of the best medicinal herbs. We're both huge believers and consumers of herbs and love the healing benefits that herbal medicine brings to the body. Go to performancetea.com and use the code ACTIVATE15 to get a 15% discount off your order. They have incredible teas for energy, focus, recovery, and balance. Again, that's performancetea.com and use the code ACTIVATE15 to get a 15% discount today. So if you're ready to activate the greatness that's deep within you, let's dive into this inspiring episode. Hey, Mark, thanks so much for being here, man. Hey, thank you so much for having me. Excited to be on and uh, look forward to see where this journey takes us. Absolutely. So let's dive right in. I've got a kind of a big opening question um, about your music specifically. I know we're going to talk about a lot of other really great things as well, but what have you learned uh, over the last years? And I know you've been doing this for quite a few years now about your music and its relationship specifically to energy, healing, and personal transformation. Well, that's like really like a multifaceted thing, you know, from it's been over 10 years now since I found out about frequencies in my music. And then, of course, later found out it wasn't really something inherent in the music. It was something that was coming through me, but I was using music as a way to convey um, this healing energy out into the world. Um, so when it, and, and I think that's really the place where I would have to go, I think. Um, you know, initially when I first found out about this energy in my music from a, a gentleman who was a former consultant to NASA, uh, you know, I thought maybe it was a guitar I played, maybe it was a style I played, the type of notes, maybe it was the type of strings that I was using. That was really how I kind of looked at it. And what I learned later was it's really an energy or something that comes through me. And somehow, some way, even though I don't consciously remember learning how to do this, I found a way to kind of embed that energy into my music and discovered my gift through the music itself. So it is still my primary way of expressing my work and, and how I interface and work with my clients and my one-on-one -on -one work and my group sessions and stuff. But it's just, um, it's been a continual unfolding and evolution to really, um, learning about the potential, I think that's not only within myself, but within all of us, and uh, getting the stuff out of the way to have the willingness to express it uh, and to bring it forward. And it's just been this really mind bending in many ways. And I'd like to say that I just easily and effortlessly stepped right into it, but it was, uh, it was a process, you know, coming out of a very left brain background and world, um, I had a lot to work through. Um, to really step into what I'm doing today. Um, but I would say probably the biggest uh, realization for myself has been that it's it's something that comes through me and then my music, my particular form of artistic expression is my way to convey it out into the world. 
So this consultant to NASA had uh, somehow, how, how did he find out about your music and what exactly did he tell you about it? Well, it's interesting because initially how he even started looking at sound as a way, well, he was involved in a study, first of all. He was involved in a study of how do we deal with all the negative energy disruptors in our modern day world? So we're talking about chemicals, uh, you know, up to over 80,000 man-made chemicals in our air, food, and water. We're talking about cell phones and Wi-Fi and EMFs and smart meters and all these electronic fields that we're being exposed to that in their study they're able to show is putting our energy into a state of disharmony and negatively impacting our levels of consciousness, our physical health and well-being. So he was looking for things that could eliminate the negative effects of these disruptors in our environment. And one day somebody had given him a recording of an Indian monk chanting uh, from the early 19, I think early 1940s or 30s, uh, Paramahansa Yogananda. Mm. And in that chanting, they found that through brainwave monitoring, they would see that people's brains would go into a state of peak performance when they would listen to this chant they would see a shift in physical energy. Well, you know, these recordings were old and the in sound so pristine. And I guess apparently he wasn't a very good chanter anyways. Uh, Doc used to joke and say, you know, I love Paramahansa like the next guy, but the guy, you know, we need to find music that'll do the same thing. And so that's really what inspired him to go out into the world and find music that would create the same energetic response. And ultimately through some synchronicity, he got a hold of one of my CDs and discovered frequencies in my music that could actually restore harmony to the body's energetic fields, you know, dramatically reducing stress, improving mental performance, increasing intuition, creativity, uh, actually increasing strength, flexibility, endurance, coordination, and balance, all these being byproducts of when your energy is in tune. And most importantly, the music has the ability to keep the energy field in tune even when being exposed to all these energy disruptors in the environment. So he saw it as kind of a, an, a tool that could be used to help people to restore harmony, not only in their energy, but in their lives, improve their health and wellness, reduce stress, and operate at a higher level. Um, he believed, and I believe to this day, you know, the more and more that we're able to uh, maintain that state of harmony, that we can open up to our infinite unlimited potential and start living our lives on a whole nother level. And as a result, you know, be able to not only take our own lives to that a higher level, but also the world uh, along with us. So very inspiring stuff, but that in a nutshell is kind of what he discovered in the music and, and really what opened up the door for me creating what I've created today through this work and, and through the music. So when he found you, when he found your music, were you still in the corporate world or were you doing music full time or what, what were you doing? Well, it's funny because music was never part of my full time agenda. Um, I had just left the corporate world. I had started doing very traditional motivational speaking. I was getting hired by professional associations. I had a keynote talk. It was called Play Beautiful Music Throughout Your Life. And it was kind of a you know, how to balance work and life and be more effective and create higher levels of fulfillment. And that's kind of the reason why I left was because the corporate world, because I lacked a lot of that. So I was on this edge, so to speak, and I made a CD for fun, just to have the experience of going into the studio and, you know, the lights and the dials and, and making an album. And that album ended up getting into his hands. So I had probably been out maybe a year or two out of the corporate world and uh, was actively pursuing my speaking uh, career at that time and coaching. And that's when I got introduced to him and found out what was really coming through the music, which is kind of funny because I'd been doing music gigs, you know, for a number of years and people would always come up to me, man, you know, I was so stressed out today and I've just been listening to you play music and I feel so relaxed and calm, you know, and thanks. And I just figure, oh, you know, it's pretty music, you know, I didn't really think anything about it, but it, it's kind of funny what ended up opening up out of, you know, something that was really kind of a hobby for me. So when you sit down to play, do you have any kind of process? Do you go into a meditation? Do you set your state of, of mind or energy or being, or what does that look like for you? 
You know, not so much prior, but what happens as soon as I start playing, I get into that zone space. It's mm, like, yeah, it's like my most effective meditations. In other words, with the quietness of the mind happen when I'm playing and it's like, um, I can get into such a space and then from there it opens up all kinds of things. Um, so it's not really something like I, well, even when I came out with that first album, there was no like inner preparation beforehand. It was, you know, we went in and recorded these songs that I'd written over the years and, and, um, you know, have fun with it. So even today when I work with people, I mean, I set intentions. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's really pretty much the beginning process. And then from there, I get into the state by just starting to play. So we didn't talk about it, but now I'm definitely wanting to ask you to play during this podcast if, you, if you're <laughs> open to it. <laughs> sure. Hey, the guitar is in tune. It's always nearby. So <laughs> I see it right there. I'm like, okay, okay, we got to hear some of this. <laughs> awesome. Let me ask you one question first, and then, and then if you want to play a little piece, that would be awesome. Um, what are some of the stories of transformations you've seen or heard of in people's lives from just listening to your music or attending your, your workshops where you teach and incorporate music? Um, what are some of those changes that you tend to see in people? You know, if I go back way back when, I remember when I was still quite skeptical about that my music could actually help facilitate healing. Um, and I just started getting my music out there. And I remember a lady called me up one day and she said, you know, Mark, call me. It was on a Saturday. I'm like kind of going, okay, she's not really a close friend. She's like more like a business associate. And so I called her up and she goes, well, I'm in the hospital. I said, well, what are you in the hospital for? She goes, well, I just, I had a hysterectomy. I said, and you're calling me on a Saturday? I mean, you know, she goes, well, she goes, I did something really different. I made the surgeons play your music while they operated on me. I said, really? She goes, yeah. She goes, you know what? And I feel great today. My energy's off the charts. The doctors are blown away about how I'm doing in my post-op recovery. She goes, and plus, I need you to send me some CDs because they want them because it's the first time they've done that long of a, of a procedure, you know, where you're leaning over, you're working on somebody where they don't have the stiff neck and the tension and all the stuff that shows up from being involved in an operation uh, over a prolonged period of time. And I'm like, interesting. So initially I started seeing things like that. I started seeing things where truck drivers, uh, guy sent me a note and he said, you know, I've been grinding my teeth my whole life, but when I play your music, I don't grind my teeth. He says it's the most amazing experience. First time ever in my whole life. I've listened to all kinds of different things. Nothing has helped, but your music does. And then as I started to develop the work and develop new ways to work with people and processes and things like that, I actually saw people have physical shifts, you know, where they had had, you know, ongoing conditions. I've seen blood sugar lowered. I've seen asthma conditions dissipate. I've seen people who have had uh, chronic anxiety go away. Uh, I just had a lady who sent me a note literally just two days ago who attended a an online session that I did online just last week. And she said, you know, I've been bedridden for pretty much the last two to three years. She goes, I have my do not resuscitate order in place. She goes, that's to the degree where I've been. And just going through your process and listening to the music, I woke up the next day, I was able to get up, walk around. I've been listening to the replay and I find myself feeling better every single day, having more energy and dissipating what has been bugging me. So um, I was really like blown away by that particular feedback. So it's really just been across the board, all kinds of different things. Everything from parents suffering from Alzheimer's who when the music's played in the environment, notice a difference, notice an increase in coherency, a reduction of stray, uh, stress. Uh, kids with autism being more focused and guided and directed when the music plays and are able to actually focus their energy and have conversation where that was something that eluded the parents or the people working um, with this child. So really just um, a, a full spectrum of different things that I've seen come back. And then what I've even seen in my own family and working with my children and dealing with the tides and ebbs of life and being sick and the challenges at school and, uh, just by playing the music in the morning while we're getting ready to go to school and do our things in the morning. It's been quite profound, the difference that I've seen in people's lives.
Mm, I love that idea of some idea. Yeah. Playing it in the morning as you're getting ready for work or school or playing it in the car on your, on your drive or, you know, I can imagine, you know, sitting at the computer working or getting ready to work and just setting your, your, your mind and your energy in a really good place. I mean, and it makes so much sense even logically, right? Because if you're, if you hear music that evokes certain emotions, uh, sadness or anger or just fire, right? And oftentimes uh, the person making that music is in that emotion. You know, they might, be, might be really angry about life. And, you know, you hear this a lot in classical music where it just evokes those intense emotions. Whereas it sounds like when you're playing, you just get into a really calm, serene, healing type of place. And that's the kind of music that comes out. Is that right? Yeah, absolutely. And it's funny you say that because I remember as I was just starting to get into this arena and I remember Dr. Jones asked me a question one day in a meeting we had, and he said, you know, Mark, what do you think is the most powerful energy disruptor of them all? Out of all the things that we're exposed to in our lives, what's the most potent? What's the most destructive? And, you know, Doc, you know, coming from NASA, I figured it had to be something like radiation or gamma rays or something cool like that. And he said, no, he goes, the most powerful energy disruptor of them all are our own limiting thoughts, beliefs, and perceptions. Mm. And I remember being very intrigued about that. And right around that time, um, I was watching somebody sent me a note, hey, you should go, interestingly enough, in Santa Fe, you should go to this sound healing expo thing in Santa Fe and, you know, go learn. So I go to their website. This is a couple years back now. And I go, and I'm looking at this website and there's all these like scientific guys talking with pocket protectors, talking about, you know, sound and vibration. I'm like going, oh my God, I don't think I can sit through two days of that. But then I heard one guy say one thing and he said that music and sound is the carrier wave for intention. And I thought, now that is intriguing. I don't need to go to the expo. I just learned what I needed to learn from that one little video. And there that changed a whole level of the work that I was doing. I realized that I could put intention into music. And if you think about it, as in some of the examples you gave about music, I mean, that's why we have music that's empowering and there's music that's disempowering. And you think about what are the intentions that are being put into not only our artistic expressions, but any expressions of our lives uh, and ultimately how those can become carrier waves for that intention. So for me, it really opened up a whole new chapter of my work of, you know, I could sit down with somebody and I could just tell that they needed to love themselves more. And I, you know, I said, I'm going to play you music for self-love. Hmm. I would record it in the studio, basically kind of like channel a piece of music and send it to them. Here, play this in your environment. Combine it with their intention to love themselves more. And these people would start to have huge breakthroughs. And so it just opened up a whole nother level of possibility of what could be infused into music and then conveyed out through those tones, through that vibration um, and combined with the person's intention for transformation and change. I mean, it just opened up the door for a whole nother level of healing and possibility. Um, and people have often ask, well, why is intention important? And I always share this story. One day a, a lady sent me an email. Is there any way you can make a song to make my husband a better man? And I, thought, <laughs> I said, God, you know, I'd be retired by now. Uh, my <laughs> wife would be playing that song all the time, <laughs> you know. And I say, you know, I could play the most beautiful song in the universe. But if your husband doesn't want to become a better man, it's not going to matter. So anytime it comes to changing thoughts, beliefs, perceptions, and interchange, you know, uh, this is a free will universe, so it needs to be a collaborative dance between the music, between the participant who's looking for the change and the transformation. And once those are in alignment, oh my gosh, all kinds of things can open up. All kinds of breakthroughs are possible. Fantastic. So now the next question is, can you play us a little piece? Sure, absolutely. And what shows up for me, and it's like I always play this piece at the beginning of everything that I do. And it's a musical mantra for opening. 
And it's really about opening to the possibility of change and transformation, opening to healing, opening to more abundance, whatever it is for the individual. But it's really about opening to the possibility. Um, and I always like to ask people, you know, are you willing to set the intention to be open to creating a healing, uh, a breakthrough, an aha, a realization, a transformation? Are you open to letting go perhaps of something that's not serving you anymore? And from there begins really the opening to higher levels of transformational change and, and healing. So I think that's where I feel compelled to start. Maybe I'll just put it out there for people tuning in is, um, you know, what are you open to changing and shifting in your life? Um, the universe is like a huge cosmic restaurant, you know, that prepares the most grand uh, foods and, 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 different treats and different things, but we have to tell the waiter what it is that we want. And we do that through our intentions. So maybe just set an intention for yourself and um, breathe. I want to invite you just to take some nice deep breath. Watch the breath. So often we forget to breathe. Right here, right now is a perfect time. breathe. Take another deep breath. As you continue to breathe, I want you to set the intention to open up. To the possibility of tapping in into that divine essence that's been hidden within you.
So just take another deep breath and intentions are great, but intentions without action are kind of uh, mute. And so what's something that you can do in the step of what you truly desire to experience and create and manifest in your life? What's a step you can take in that direction? And just it can be very simple. Just take a step and then begin to see what shows up for you. Follow the synchronicities and go on the journey to bringing to fruition what it is that you desire to bring to fruition. So there you go, a little musical mantra for opening. Mm, that was incredible, Mark. Yeah, thank you so much. I uh, had this beautiful vision of, uh, of a dream that I'm working towards, and it was just super clear in my mind's eye, and I really felt the energy of it and the power of it. And uh, that was really helpful. It put me into that, you know, uh, it'd be interesting to, to um, do some brainwave scans while listening to the music because I felt like I went into probably theta like really right. quickly. And I'm guessing that's probably what happens for most people. Well, and, and that's the space that, you know, we create it. Right. You know, I, I saw a piece just the other day where it's talking about how theta, we're pretty much in theta from age, you know, zero to seven. Right. And that's how we imprint in our primary belief structures that we're going to operate from for the rest of our lives. And of course, some of those belief structures are empowering and some of them, in many cases, are disempowering. Um, but that's what we get to work on later in our life experience and our unfolding is kind of letting go what's not serving us anymore. So that there was some preliminary brain mapping that was done with these scientists and they showed that going into a theta state and how it's really an ideal state, not only to imprint and plant seeds for what you want to believe about yourself, about life, about the universe, but also a great state to reach in and take out really the weeds, the things that aren't in alignment with who and what we are. And so interesting that you bring that up. Yeah, I mean, that's the space that they consider hypnosis. And, you know, we all know through, and, and hypnosis, if done with positive intention in this way, is the way to reprogram your brain for the things that you want, exactly as you're saying. So, yeah, that's a, it's a powerful place to create from. And, um, and, and moving forward into a little bit more of your, your own life, some of the things, because you're a coach, you're, you're an author, you're a teacher, you, you're a musician, you help people in their lives. But obviously we, you know, as leaders, as, as speakers, as trainers, we go through our own challenges. And mm -hmm. curious, what are, what are, what's maybe a big challenge you've been through lately? And what are some of the things you did to help you get through it? Well, I think probably just in, in even looking at this work, you know, I think I might have shared with you before when we've talked about being very reluctant to step in into doing this work. And then I, I found, I think with many of us, you know, we don't give ourselves credit or really own the magnificence of what we're bringing forward in, into the world. And we kind of take it for granted and we kind of take ourselves for granted. And that's certainly been the case for me in my own um, journey through this process. First of all, not wanting anything to do with anything healing or, what I would have called back then, woo woo, you know, stuff. And, you know, ha and not really owning what it is that I do. And, and just, you know, it's been a constant commitment part process to, you know, I'm committed to owning this and seeing this and, and really being in gratitude for the gift that I've been given and to see the value of it. And a lot of times I think we take ourselves for granted, many of us do. So um, I think for myself, that's been probably one of the biggest areas that I've had to really shift through. And really recently, it's like recently I've seen a huge change. I've seen a huge change in the impact on people. Um, I just did a demo the other day. It was like a little audition, seven minutes. And these people were like freaking blown away. Their whole energetic state was transformed. And it was really about what I, the overwhelming message was own the value and the power of the work that you're bringing forward and to really honor that. And that's really been a big shift for me this year is really seeing that. And as a result, I've seen it even more and more how 
uh, this work can positively impact people's lives. So I think uh, for myself, it would be really to own my own mastery and my own beauty and, and, and really to honor the expression, the gift that I've been giving and how it is that I bring it forward. Um, where in the times in the past, I haven't been so willing to do that. You know, I've been very critical upon myself. I think with many of us, we have a tendency to be very critical upon ourselves and you know, we beat ourselves with our beat up stick if we don't do it the way that we think we should or quote, have it be perfect or something to that effect. And it's amazing what can open up when we begin to own and honor ourselves and who and what we are. So how can people tuning in step into their purpose, uh, own their own passions and purpose more fully? What would you recommend that they do? Well, I think the first step is always to have the willingness and to set the intention to do so. You know, I think one of the biggest lessons for humanity to learn is we're the commanders in chief of energy. We have the ability to command it, to shape it, to form it, to, to move it, to grow it. And, but in order to do so, it all starts with intention. And when it comes to realizing our purpose and, and expressing that in the world and, and uncovering it, if we don't know what it is, and then, you know, moving past the fear and the reservation we might have in expressing it, it all begins with an intention and a willingness to make it so. Um, you know, quite commonly in, in everybody that I work with at one time or another, we want to have the answers, right, before we engage upon the journey. You know, we don't want to make a mistake. We don't want to mess up. We don't want to fail. But life doesn't really work that way. You set the intention to do so. And then the universe will provide the answers and the synchronicities and the old breadcrumbs on the, on the trail to where it is that we want to go along the journey once the journey begins. And so that's where I would always recommend starting with is to set the intention to get in touch with your purpose, to express it, to have it become clear. And sure enough, probably not in your time schedule or not in the way that you think it will, but it will reveal itself to you. And that's our job to be extra sensitive to those messages. I remember as a kid, I used to get upset that God just didn't pick up the phone and call me. You know, why didn't God just pick up the phone and call me and say, yo, Mark, man, you know, maybe you should stop doing this. Maybe you should do this. And, and then your life will be better. But I never got the call. And I remember it used to upset me. But now I realize we get the call every day um, through our experiences, through the synchronicities. It's just in life, we get very attached to how we think things are going to unfold. We put our horse blinders on. Meanwhile, all the miracles are happening out here. Um, let them go. Remove them and be open to see how life responds. But start off with the intention and the willingness and the first step. And you'll be surprised at what begins to open and move for you. And then, as you're saying as well, really start to own that, right? Start to start to accept those qualities about yourself and then and reinforce those beliefs about yourself too, right? So many people and so many of us, it's like we recognize certain qualities within ourselves or people tell us these qualities and yet we we tend to have this disbelief or yes. you know, don't don't own those qualities. And really it's about stepping into that assurance and self-confidence of yourself. Otherwise, you're never going to be able to move forward and, and really fulfill your purpose, right? Well, I think absolutely. And I also think that, you know, for us to realize that everything is already there, you know, it's like, I love the story of, you know, Michelangelo being asked how he carved David. Mm. The step, you know, probably yeah. one of the most famous art pieces. And he said, I didn't carve it. He said, I just remove the pieces that were hiding the masterpiece within the block of marble. And that in essence is what our life journey is about. The masterpiece is already there. You already are divine. You're already made up of the same energy that set the universe in motion. All you have to do is remove the pieces that are telling you anything contrary to that. And that I really think is a big part of the game of life and a big part of the purpose for all of us is to reveal the masterpiece that's within and to have the courage to express that and to share that in the world. And that becomes the transformative catalyst to really create the change in our own lives, but also uh, to create the change I think we're all seeking in the world today. Um, so it's so important for people to really embody that. The masterpiece is already there. 
just remove what's hiding it and have the courage to bring it forward. And you'll be amazed at what begins to shift in your life experience. Mm, I love that. So I do want to encourage everyone tuning in uh, to go visit Mark's website, markromeromusic.com. We'll put it in the link below in the description. Um, there you can pick up his, his CDs. You can um, uh, sign up if you want Mark to coach you in your life or your business, relationships, health, things like that. Um, he's also a speaker if you want him to speak at your, your conferences or your events. So go check out Mark Romero Music. At least get uh, one of his CDs and start uh, uh, doing this visioning and intention setting and, and um, playing it to help take your life to the next level. And as we kind of wind down here, Mark, I have one final question for you. What's the number one thing you would suggest people do to, that they can start doing right now, today, to activate their own greatness from within? The thing that shows up as you ask that question is, I think to one degree or another, we're all experiencing an obstacle or a challenge in our life. You know, whether it be in the area of relationship, whether it be in the area of health, maybe in the area of prosperity, wherever it might be. And of course, we have a tendency to fight and resist those things. And I think the, the biggest piece is to start shifting your perspective of those as really being a stepping stone to another level of revealing that masterpiece that's within, rather than fighting it and cursing it, resisting it, using colorful metaphors to describe it. Use it as a ladder to help lift yourself to another level. Because life, at least here right now, there's going to be twists and turns. There's going to be ups and downs. There's going to be things that happen. Um, use those challenges, those dark nights of the souls, those rainy days as an opportunity to help elevate your life. And you'll find your ability to be able to shift through the challenges and the bumps in the road that life brings uh, so much quicker and easier and uh, continue to build momentum in revealing the masterpiece that's within each and every one of us. Beautiful. Love it. Thank you so much, Mark. Definitely appreciate you being here again. Everybody go check out markromeromusic.com and, um, and let us know what you think in the comments below. Share this and uh, love to hear from you all tuning in. And Mark, this was awesome. Thanks so much, man. It's been great connecting with you again. My pleasure. Thank you so much for having me. Absolutely. Well, that's it for today's episode. Our hope and desire is that you get as much out of these interviews and episodes as we do. Each week, you can count on us being here to help you activate the greatness that's already within you. And we can all do that by continuing to develop and grow our minds, bodies, emotions, and connection to a higher purpose. Please make sure to share this with your friends on Facebook, iTunes, Twitter, and Instagram. Tag Crane Factor and use the hashtag Activating Greatness so we can continue growing this community together and changing the world for the better. And a huge shout out to our sponsors for making this show possible. Head over to performancetea.com to try their recovery, balance, focused, and energy teas. These teas are made from incredible healing herbal plants that help your body heal, gives you natural energy, helps prevent disease, and help you feel better in every way. Again, that's performance T, that's T E A, performance T.com, and use the code activate15 to get a 15% discount off your order. That code works on their website and it also works on Amazon. Again, activate15, and you'll get a 15% discount off of these amazing teas. We appreciate you tuning in and for supporting our sponsors who make this show possible. Remember, you already have greatness within you. You just need to activate it. Thanks again, and we'll talk to you on the next episode.